guys, welcome back to my channel. We are going back into flight attendant stories. Hear that? It's heat, because these topics are hot. Wow, that smells nice. Sometimes I take a little trip down memory lane and I'm like, ha! Huh. Just when I thought I was out of stories, I realized I wasn't. Flight attendant stories, episode six or is it episode seven without further ado p.s just fyi these stories are not mine these are stories which were contributed to me by my friends funny thing is two of the stories that i'm about to tell you happened from the same person and she is the 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 actual offender and then the other one was contributed to me just this morning while i was on instagram so if you don't already follow me on instagram and you have stories that you want me to share for you to the wide wide audience of the world email me Back in the day, when I was a flight attendant, I had a friend who uh, was telling me about a time that she called sick. I don't know how it works with other airlines, but with Emirates, if you're going to call sick, you have to call the sick hotline. That's not what it's called. That's my, that's my slang for it. So you ring that number and then it takes you to this automated voice thing. And then you press two. When you press two, that means you're going to call sick. After you press two, you have to wait on the line and then you have to speak to a person. You have to tell that person, what's your sickness? What's, why are you not coming to work? So my friend rings in, she presses two, and then the person speaks. What is the reason that you will not be coming to work today? I'm just having a, I'm having a problem with my, my seeing, my eyesight. Is there like an infection? What's the problem? Oh, um, I'm just having a problem seeing myself going into work today. <laughs> Get it? Problem with my eyesight. I don't see myself coming into work today. That's the story. The end. <laughs> Did she get fired? You're probably asking. Did she get fired and did she end up going to work? She did not end up going to work. And she also didn't get fired and just FYI, she still works in the company. They always talk about um, people having nine lives, like a cat. You know how they say cats have nine lives? And then they say people who are naughty within the company who never get fired because they are like a cat, they have nine lives. She is one of them. Here's the next story who is the same person. I can't believe I'm telling you this. Back in the day, she used to work in business class. I think she still does. If you are a crew in business class, there are sections and you are allocated a section of people and these are the people that you focus your attention on. So she was telling me about this flight that she had and she said that there was one person and he would always just raise his voice and sort of like yell at her. No matter what she did, it was like not good. He would always be pissed off. She was at the end of her wits, just like up to here with being yelled at for what she thought was like no apparent reason. She had no idea why. He was so cranky. Anyway, later on down the flight, he asked me for a cup of tea, but he was rude about it. Just give me a tea. So she goes, I couldn't stand it anymore. So I went into the galley and then like no one was in the galley. So I took one of the cups from the heat warmers. I put it in my butt and I just farted in this cup. And then I made him a cup of tea in that same cup. She farted in this cup, guys. I don't even know how to commentate on this actual occurrence. Part of me thinks that it was genius. Is that wrong? <laughs> and part of me is disturbed. <laughs> Moral of the story is if you're in that position where you're very um, upset or grumpy, you know, just have a chat with someone. Because karma sucks and sometimes you don't realize that the person who is the holder of that karma is the one also serving you a cup of tea. You know what I mean? So, last story. So this morning on my Instagram, I was on Instagram stories and then someone messaged me. So there's this guy, his name is Sodwi. He used to live with one of my um, friends. Anyway, I was like, today I'm gonna film a couple of flight attendant stories. Do you have any stories that you want me to share? And he goes, uh, yeah, snakes on the plane. I was like, what? And I thought it was gonna be like, I heard this story happen. No, it actually happened on his flight and he was the one who found the snake, a real life snake on the aircraft mid-flight. I, I, I assume every airline has this rule, but with Emirates, you as the cabin crew member must check the lavatories assigned to you every 20 minutes, thereabouts. Like you have to do the rounds. And two reasons, safetyness, like sometimes people might smoke in the plane and then they're gonna like try to hide it. And also you might find a snake on the plane. And also cleanliness, you know. That amount of people, that smaller space, there's definitely some cleanliness issues naturally if you don't go there, check it, tidy it. Super glamorous. 
So he was like, he was checking the toilets and then he saw this thing. Hang on, wait, I have to read the text message. And he sent me pictures. Ba, 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 ba. This was in around 2009, 2010, and I have not heard of any further snakes on the plane. They were on their way to Mauritius, Dubai, Mauritius. He goes, passengers complained of a weird thing in my lavatory in a Boeing 777 to Mauritius from Dubai. So I go and check. Like no worry in the world, I see something on the urine speckled floor by the bin coming out from the door. Under the sink, sandy color, I immediately called for the purser on the intercom. I tell her, We have a snake on the plane. So the purser thought that it was a joke. I say to her, No joke dear, come down and check it out for yourself. She checks, finds out that it's real. We treat the lavatory situation as a dangerous goods and seal it off. And then the purser calls up front, which is to the cockpit and says to them, we have a fucking snake on the plane. They were laughing so much because they weren't expecting it to happen. So the cockpit's laughing, like everyone's laughing like, ha ha ha, this is so hilarious. And then it dawns on them that they actually have to do something about it. Like, what do you do when you have a snake on the plane? He didn't actually say what they did with the snake. When they say they treated it as a dangerous good situation, what that normally means, like if we had a dangerous good, Oh, if there was a dangerous good, we'd pop it in one of the containers. Aluminium containers, which is something that all aircrafts have. That's where we store things like amenities, wines. When you go to the galley of an aircraft, you'll see there are aluminium containers stored everywhere. So what they would have done, <laughs> what they would have done is they would have taken the dangerous good kit, put this snake inside this aluminium box, like container, and sealed it off and then left it in the toilet, which they also closed. That's roughly the procedure. Bear in mind, I haven't been cabin crew for four years, so there's probably a few holes in my explanation of how to deal with dangerous goods there. But anyway, so he carries on. He goes, yeah, so we carry on and finally get quarantined in uh, when we get to Mauritius and then the vets get on board <laughs> and then we get published in the local paper the next morning. We see it makes the front page as we're sipping cocktails on the beach. Yeah, it's quite the story. Of course, there was a whole PR public relations scenario after that and I was like, Oh my god! He actually emailed me some photos. Here's a snapshot of the snake. And I said to him, did you find out how it got in there? They reckon it was a passenger who was connecting from another country. Thanks for sharing, Sodwi. I had an idea. I know you guys love these flight attendant stories and every now and then it'll pop up in my mind. I'm like, that's hilarious. I've got to share it. So if you're actually crew or ex-crew or you know of any stories and you want me to share them with the YouTube world, feel free to email them to me. I will read through them and we'll see what we can do. But please, only true stories because we want to keep the integrity of these stories. It'll be pretty fun, right? The email address is in the description of this video, so feel free to send it there to me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions or stories, pop them in the comment section down below. If you're a newcomer and you want to hear more of these kinds of stories, go ahead and subscribe. But my recommendation is to turn on the notification bell, like bing, so that you don't miss out. At the moment, I don't have my regular day that I post. So my videos will just pop up sort of sporadically. And because of the YouTube algorithm, you may never know that it's there. So feel free to subscribe and set the notification on, on. Okay fam, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Bye. 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 How's the blush looking? How's the blush? Yes. <laughs> How about now?